Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah Some of the ways in which the Salaf al-Salih rigwan Allahi alayhim that they distinguish themselves from us and from many of the people of our time and throughout history in fact is several characteristics one of the characteristics is ikhlas sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Salaf al-Salih that they used to speak and strive their utmost to be sincere to Allah Azza wa Jal. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al-kareem, Wa ma umiru illa la'abudu allaha mukhlisin al-lahudin. And they weren't commanded except to worship Allah alone, and to Him is the religion. And that is dalil ala ikhlas, sincere, sincerity, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, making sure that when they spoke, they spoke with ikhlas. When they... Uh, did actions, they did it with ikhlas. And they had the shurut a kabul al amal They had the conditions for having their deeds accepted, which is first and foremost, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you worship on Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tabarak wa ta'ala alone. And secondly, that you do it with mutaba, that you're following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And the second trait I want to mention from the Salaf al-Saleh is Sidq, that they were also truthful. The Salaf, for them that was very important to have truthful speech, because that is also from the book in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, whereas now we have many people who claim Salafiyyah, claim to be from Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best their sincerity. And Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala knows best their truthfulness, as we see many people who lie and lie on others and then claim that they're Salafi and claim that they're following the tariqah to Salaf as salih that they're following the way of the Salaf as salih And all they do is engage in controversy and fitna. And those are not traits of the Salaf as salih So Sidq is very important. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says, We can have in Kareem, Ya you and Nas. Ya yu alladheena aamanu wa taqullaha allaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tumutunna illa wa antum muslimun Ya alladheena ya ya yu annas ya yu alladheena aamanu wa taqullaha wa qulu qulun sadida yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya yu alladheena aamanu O you who believe he's addressing the the mu'mineen addressing the believers ya yu alladheena aamanu ittaqu allaha fear Allah wa qulu qulun sadida and uh say uh, truthful speech, straight, correct, direct, pure, with sirk, with truthfulness. So say truthful speech. What will what? What's the reward for that? And Allah will make your deeds mutaba. Uh, your deeds will be following that sirk, that straight speech, that correct in 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 pure. In truthful speech, Yuslah lakum a'malakum Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you and help you to have and, and to, to correct your deeds and to make sure your deeds are in accordance with your tongue. And He will forgive you of your sins. The third trait I want to talk to you about regarding the Salaf al Salih is that also they had. Um, that they had they were uh, not prolonging speech you know long drawn out speech uh, and sometimes as we see later generations many people have long drawn out speech with little fawaid very few benefits very few benefits talking 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 excessive speech but very few benefits and the more you speak, the more chances you uh, are more likely to incur sin. Okay, that doesn't mean we don't speak, no. But if you speak with speech, la fi. If you speak with things that have no benefit, for example, you get in every controversy, you get in every fitna, you want to speak about these ones, you want to speak about this one, you want to every time there is a, a controversy that you have to add your two cents. There's no benefit. Or every time there's a chance, an opportunity to backbite someone, you are first to be on the bandwagon. 
or commit uh, nemima, spreading wickedness throughout the community. And we know these are wicked and sinful things. The Prophet ﷺ was going by some graves and he said, The Prophet ﷺ was going by two graves and he pointed to the two graves and he said, Verily they're being punished and they're being punished for something which isn't great, meaning which the people don't see as a big deal. As for one of them is they didn't clean themselves properly when they used the restroom at Karamakam Allah. And as for the second, they used to spread wickedness, you know, spread tales with the intent of spreading wickedness around the people. You know, this is the Nimima. And so this shows us that the sins of the tongue are many and are serious and are dangerous to us. And so when we speak less and follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as our Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Tarkuhu min husna Islam al-Mari Tarkuhu ma la yani that the, from the excellence of a person's Islam is that they leave those things which don't concern them so by avoiding fitna and avoiding controversy and avoiding speaking about it and avoiding the sins of the tongue, and as the Prophet Sallallahu said, Ma min shayin min khulq. There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believer on the day of judgment than good manners. And verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. You know, wicked actions and sinful speech. So it's very important to be cautious and in, in, in indulging in that which is of no benefit. So, when you have nothing good to say, as the Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith, لِيَصْمُتْ The one, say khair, say something good, or keep silent. Uh, another benefit, or another trait of the Salaf al-Salih, rahimahumullah jami'an, is also the quwa ta'thir. Quwa, quwa, ta'thir. Meaning that the Salaf, that when they spoke, and when they gave reminders that it had a, a lot of power, it had a lot of strength behind it with evidence, and it affected the hearts of the people. They were concerned about the hidayah of the people. So they gave the medicine that the people were suffering from in their various societies. So if you find that you're a caller to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there's no effect, nothing positive that comes about, you're not affecting people's lives, you're not helping people, then this is a chance for you to turaja nafsik, to look back at yourself and look at what you're speaking about. Is it something beneficial? Are you bringing benefit to the people or not? Another, and this can also be through action as well, that uh, by setting a good example. So when you're around people, are you setting a good example? Do the people see good from you or do they see wickedness? Or are bad examples or things that do not give them uh, any positive, righteous benefit. A last trait that the uh, Salaf uh, possessed was the, the Targhib and the Tarheeb you know, in their speech and in their muhadarat and in their khutb. So when they gave khutbas and when they gave lectures and when they uh, admonished the people, it was between giving the people hope and also instilling fear of people violating the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they gave people hope with regards to paradise and with regards to the reward and encouragement to do good and righteous deeds, encouraging the people by calling them to 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 supplicate to Allah, calling them to worship Allah Azza wa Jalla alone, calling them to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not to follow uh, blind follow sheikhs and celebrate the birthday of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or make takfir of people or whatever. But they they called them to that which was good, that which would benefit, re rectify them and re rectify their societies and help them to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And 
reminded them of the reward of Allah Azza wa Jal. At the same time, their speech also had the effect of reminding the people of the punishment for violating the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the punishment for not enjoining the right and forbidding the wrong, the, the punishment for enjoining the wrong and the evil and avoiding and prohibiting righteousness and goodness. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those who follow the minhaj of the Salaf as salih And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas, with thabat ala sunnah, and sidq in our speech, truthfulness in our speech. And may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala forgive us of our ignorance, forgive us of our shortcomings, and bless us to come closer to Him, Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.